Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 104. Day 3104, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 104, and today we'll have our fourth lesson in a series of 10 on the topic of probability. The problem that we see on the blackboard is not something that is in the book, it is not in the book, don't try to look for it, you won't find it. Here's what the problem says. It says that two people, A and B, are working independently on a problem. It's important to understand that they are working independently. In other words, the odds of A succeeding or not succeeding has absolutely nothing, has no bearing on whether or not B succeeds and vice versa. We are told that the odds that A will succeed, A has 30% chance of succeeding, we are told. We are told that B has 70% chance of succeeding. And the question simply is, what are the odds that at least one of them, at least one of them succeeds? What are the odds that at least one of them succeeds? Well, let's first understand the problem. What is, what, let's first understand the question there is. What exactly is the question asking? What do they mean by the odds that at least one of them will succeed? What are the odds that at least one of them, at least, what are the odds that at least one of them, what are the odds that at least one of them succeeds is same as, is same as saying, what are the odds that at least one of them succeeds is same as saying, what are the odds? What are the odds that either A or B or they both succeed? That's the important part. That's what we need to understand. What are the odds that at least one of them succeeds is exactly the same thing as saying what are the odds that either A or B or they both succeed. If A succeeds then at least one of them has succeeded. If B succeeds at least one of them has succeeded and if they both succeed it's again at least one of them has succeeded. That's what it, the question is this. What are the odds that either A or B or both succeeds? What we're looking for is the probability that either A or B or both succeed. And we know that the answer to this question is simply the probability that A will succeed plus the probability that B will succeed minus the probability that A and B will succeed. This is something we have done it many, many times. This is, by many, many times, I mean this is our fourth lesson in all of the three, three, three previous view, uh, in all of the previous three videos, in all of the previous three lessons, day number 101. 101, 102, and 103, when we started this topic of probability, we encountered this notion of inclusive exclusive principle. Inclusive exclusive principle that we first encountered on page number 300 in the context of Venn diagram on day number, and if you haven't watched it, watch it again, day number 3091 tells us that the odds that either A or B or both succeed is equal to the odds that A succeeds, odds that B succeeds, minus the probability that they both succeed. And this will only come into play, this will only come into play if, if A and B are not mutually exclusive. We don't have a luxury of repeating the same concept over and over again. This is the third day, this is the fourth day where we include, so where we're repeating it, but eventually we have to we'll have to stop it. This will only come into play if A and B are not mutually exclusive. Very quickly on the top here, let's take a look at it one more time as to what it means to be mutually exclusive. In the context of Venn diagram, these two events, A and B, these are mutually 
exclusive. Why? Because they're not overlapping. For example, very quick example, very very quick example. Let's say let's say that we have five students taking English and three students taking French. Out of these eight students, if we were to pick one at random, what are the odds that the student that we pick is, is taking French? It's out, simply out of three out of five. The odds of taking somebody who, picking somebody who's taking studying French. What are the odds that if I pick somebody and he's speaking English? Well, there are five of them taking speaking English, it's five out of eight, simple enough. They are mutually exclusive. In other words, when exactly five students are taking English and exactly three students are studying French and there is no students who is studying both, then if I were to pick one student at random, then the odds that event A and B, in this case, let's call them event E and event F, the odds that event E and F will take place at the same time is zero. This thing is zero. This thing is absolutely zero. Why? Because if I were to pick one student, because five students are picking, speaking, uh, taking English, three students are taking French, and no students are taking both languages, therefore it is impossible, having chosen one student at random, and I tell you that this student is studying English, and then I ask you that what are the odds that this particular student is taking French, also is zero. Uh, given students cannot be st studying English and French together because we are told that exactly five are speaking English and only uh, exactly five are taking English and three are speak taking French. This does not exist. This is equal to zero. In this case here, the odds that both of these events take place because there is no student who possesses both of these characteristics. Do you understand? On the other hand, on the other hand, if we have a situation like this, now we are going to talk about not mutually exclusive. Not mutually exclusive means that if you were to pick one student or roll a dice once or pick one card out of the deck, whatever it is, what are the odds that two events take place at the same time? Well, let's take a look at it. For example, let's say that 12 students are taking English and 10 students are taking French and 7 are taking, seven are taking both. So let's draw it. So, this is, this, is, this is the English, and we're going to call this event E. This is the French, we're going to call it event F. We are told that 12 are taking English, 10 are taking French, and then they go on to tell us that 7 are taking both. If 7 are taking both, they, they possess both quality, they have both characters, they're taking French and English. As soon as you put a 7 there, we have to, because those 7 students are counted here, those 7, stu those seven students are out of those 12 students, out of those 12 students who are taking English, out of those 12 students who are taking English, are also taking French. Out of those 12, there are seven students who are, in addition to taking English, they are also taking French. So we cannot count them twice. As soon as you put a seven here, you have to take away seven from here, it becomes a five. And here, it becomes a three. There are ten students altogether taking French, and out of those ten students that are taking French, seven are also taking English. And here, the odds that we take, if you were to pick one student at random, the odds that, is, that students are taking both French and English, it's not zero. It is possible. It is possible. It is seven. It is seven out of fifteen. There are fifteen total students. There are fifteen total students here because this seven is counted twice. You see, seven plus three is ten, plus five, fifteen. Therefore, here the odds of picking somebody who's taking both English and French, this is the probability of somebody who's taking English and French. It's 7 out of 15. It is not 0. It is not 0 because these events are not mutually exclusive. They overlap. They have something in common. It is possible for two events to take place together. It is possible for us to pick one student at random and it is quite possible that you pick one student at random and you ask yourself, well, and, you, and that student tells you, you pick one student at random and that student tells you that I'm taking English. It is possible to ask ourselves, is he also taking French? Is it possible? And the answer, of course, is possible. The odds of such a thing is 7 out of 15. Or else, in the previous scenario, if the student told you that he's taking English, then the odds that he's also taking French was zero because they were exclusive. They were two, two, in, in the previous case, the two sets were disjointed. Do you understand? Enough of the talk. We have talked too much on the same topic over and over again. So, let's finish this up. So this is how we're going to have to figure it out.
Let's answer the question. Enough of the talk, as we said. Let's answer the question. So, here's the equation. We can we can continue the work on the top if you like. Instead of having to rewrite the equation, we're just going to continue the work on the top. Where is my cap? So, probability. I have to rewrite the equation because it makes it easier. Probability that either a or b or both happen is equal to the probability of A right here plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. But the question is how are you going to figure out the odds of these two events happening together? But this comes from the fact that if you recall, if you look at the problem, it tells you in the beginning that these two people work independently. And if the two events are independent, if the two events are independent, then the probability that both A and B happen at the same time is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Do you understand? And now we can do our work. We know the odds of A succeeding. We were told that there is a 30% chance that A will succeed. We were told that there was 30% chance that A will succeed. We were told that there was 70% chance that B will succeed. Minus the odds that A will succeed is 3 out of 10 times the odds that B will succeed is 7 out of 10. We're going to continue here. So that is simply, this is just 10 out of 10 here. This is 3 out of 10 and 7 out of 10 which is 10 out of 10. This is just 1 minus 3 times 7 is 21. 21 out of 100. 21 out of 100 and 1 out of 1 is simply 100 over 100. 100 minus 20 would have been 80. So it is 79. 79 out of 100 or 79%. There we go. We just answered it. We just answered it. Question was, what are the odds that either A or B or both succeed? And as we told you before, one more time before, before, I, before, I, go into the, before I go into something else and we forget about it, as we talked about it before, in most textbooks, in most cases, instead of saying what are the odds that A or B or both succeed, most textbooks leave this out. They leave this out out of sheer laziness. But it is there. You have to understand that if somebody asks you what are the odds that either A or B succeed, it's the same as asking what are the odds that A or B or both succeed. It's the same thing. Because it's either, if both of them succeed, then, one, then we have fulfilled the condition that A or B succeeds. You understand? It's a bit redundant, so we take it, we leave it out. That was one way. That was one way of answering the question. And but that is not the only way to answer this question. Let's look at it another way. So that was the first method. The first method, this was the first method, which is to employ, which is to employ inclusive, inclusive, exclusive principle. Inclusive, exclusive principle. That's the first. This is the first method. Let's look at the second method. Same exact problem. Same exact problem. Let's see what we can do. The second method, again the question is, what are the odds that either A or B or both succeed? And you will see in a second, you will see in a second the importance of, of keeping this there. People sometimes leave it out, but it's, it's a good idea to leave it there because it does play a role. It has to be there. You'll see in a second here. What are the odds that either A or B, oh sorry, what are the odds that either A or B or they both succeed? Well, another way we can answer this question as opposed to inclusive exclusive principle is to look at it this way. The odds that A succeeds or B succeeds or they both succeed is based on three different possibilities. One possibility is that A succeeds but B does not. With B with the bar, B with the bar means not, not as in B is not going to happen, even B is not going to happen. In other words, A succeeds but B fails. Plus the possibility that A fails, A fails but B succeeds. You see, here A succeeds and B fails. Here A fails and B succeeds. Or they both succeed. 
or they both succeed, which is the odds that A succeeds and B succeeds. And the and the and the it's right here actually as a matter of fact, the odds that both A and B succeed, which is the both part here, the probability that both A and B succeed is simply the product of the two events, probability that A succeeds times the probability that B succeeds, because we were told in the beginning that the events are independent. If the events are independent, then the odds that they both succeed at the same time is simply their product. They are, this is the product of their respective probability, that is. Assuming, not assuming rather, given the fact that they are independent events. They have to be independent. In other words, the probability of one event cannot influence the probability of other event. The odds of either A or B succeeding has absolutely no influence, no impact, uh, no bar uh, barrier on the odds of the other one succeeding or failing. Do you understand? Let's, let's, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here, and let's see what, what answer we'll get out of this one. So here it is. We have the numbers in front of us. The odds that A will succeed is 3 out of, three out of 10. Stay with me in the story. It's very important that you stay with me in the story. The odds that B will fail, we told that B, the odds that B succeeds is 7 out of 10, 70%. If the B has 70% chance of succeeding, then it means that B must have 30% chance of failing. So that's the first part. The chance, we are told that A has 30% chance of succeeding. If A has a 30% chance of succeeding, which means that A must have 70% chance of failing. And B, we told, has a 70% chance of succeeding. And finally, the odds that they both succeed is simply the product of the two, which is A has 30% chance of succeeding and B has 70% chance of succeeding. Let's see what we get out of it. So that's just 9. 9 out of 100. And that's 49 out of 100. And that's simply 21 out of 100. 21 out of 100. Let's add them up. We can, we can do them orally. We don't have to do it out. There's, there's not really much to do. It's very simple. 21 plus 9 is 30. 21 plus 9 is 30. 30 plus 50 would have been 80. We don't have 50, we have 49, therefore 30 plus 49 is 79. It is 79%, 79 out of 100, just like before. Just like before, this is going to be, this is going to be 79 out of 100, just like before. The, the odds are 79% that, that at least one of them will succeed. At least one of them succeeding, Sam is saying that either A or B or they both succeed. So that's another way of doing looking at the problem, another way of doing it. However, that is not the only way. There is one more way. There is a third way. There is a third way of looking at this problem, which is this way. These are not the only two ways, is what I meant to say. These are not the only two ways. There is a third way. There is a third way of looking at it. It's just a matter of perspective. It's just a matter of perspective as to how you look at the world. So here was the question. The question was, what are the odds that either A or B or they both succeed? Which is same as, as we understand, which is same as saying, what are the odds that at least, at least one of them succeeds? Which is same as, which is same as, which has to be the same as one minus one minus the odds that neither succeeds. One minus the odds that neither succeeds. Or if you like, which is same as one minus the odds that they both fail. That they both fail. Let's leave this down here. So which is simply 1 minus, we were told, which, which is simply the odds that A fails times the odds that B fails. Again, is the product of the two events because these two events are independent. Because A and B are independent, that the odds that they both fail is simply the odds that A fails times the odds that B fails. I'm going to continue here. So it's going to be 1 minus the odds that A fails, we were told that A has a 30% chance of uh, succeeding, therefore A has 70% chance of failing. 
you were told that B has 70% chance of succeeding. If B has 70% chance of succeeding, it has 30% chance of failing. So simply, 1, which is same as 100 over 100, which is our 1, minus 21 over 100. 100 over 100 minus 21 over 100, 100 minus 21 is 79. Voila! Right here. So it all depends on how you want to go about it. It totally depends on how you want to go about it, but as long as you do it logically, systematically, rationally, it should all work out. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.